Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Here I'm going to be starting a new series where I go through all the days of Advent of Code uh, 2017. So if you don't know, there's a website called adventofcode.com and they have many years and right now I'm doing 2017. So I'm just going to go through all of them and show how I would solve them and you know, maybe you could learn a little from it because I feel like some people might get stuck. So we're starting off with day one and it says, the night before Christmas, one of Santa's elves calls you in a panic. The printer's broken. We can't print the naughty or nice list. By the time you make it to sub-basement 17, there are only a few minutes until midnight. We have a big problem, she says. There must be almost 50 bugs in this system, but nothing else can print the list. Stand in the square quick. There's no time to explain. If you can convince them to pay you in stars, you'll be able to, and then she pulls the lever and the world goes blurry. When your eyes can focus again, everything seems a lot more pixelated than before. She must have sent you inside the computer. You check the system clock. 25 milliseconds until midnight. With that much time, you should be able to collect all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day, I mean millisecond, in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. And each puzzle grants one star. Good luck! You're standing in one room with digitization quarantine written in LEDs along one wall. The only door is locked, but it includes a small interface. It says restricted area, strictly no digitized users allowed. It goes on to explain that you may only leave by solving a CAPTCHA to prove you're not a human. Apparently, you only get one millisecond to solve the CAPTCHA. Too fast for a normal human, but it feels like hours to you. The CAPTCHA requires you to review a sequence of digits, your puzzle input, and find the sum of all digits that match the next digit in the list. The list is circular, so the digit after the last digit is the first digit in the list. Ooh, it's kind of confusing. For example, 1122 produces a sum of 3, and in parentheses they have 1 plus 2. Uh, and the answer, and the reason for that is because the first digit, 1, matches the second digit, and the third digit, 2, matches the fourth digit. 1111 produces 4 because each digit all ones match the next digit. One, two, three, four produces zero because no digit matches the next. That makes sense. Nine, one, two, one, two, one, two, nine produces nine because the only digit that matches the next one is the last digit, nine. Well, that makes sense. What is the solution to your CAPTCHA? And here they're asking uh, that I have to identify myself with one of these services. Alright, so I've logged in and with this account I've actually already entered in a few answers already um, but I'm still gonna show you know how to get the answer. So let's let's start working on this. So my setup here is I have an advanced folder and then I just have to move into 2017 and I should have a clear folder and then I'm gonna open this folder in my IDE and here in Atom I'm gonna make a new file I'm going to make a new file and call it day one one. It gives us a few inputs and outputs. So I'm just going to copy that. So they said capture, so that's what I'm going to call this function. And I'm going to comment out the answer. Okay, cleaned it up. So that's what we should expect. I'm going to write the definition, CAPTCHA, we're accepting a number as a parameter, and then if we're going to want to uh, run through each digit in this number, I think it'd be a good idea to turn this number into an array. And to do that, in Ruby first you have to turn it into a string. So I write string equals num to string. To s and then I say array is string and if I use the split method and pass in blank string out it'll return an array Ruby string and you can see here this is what the split method does it divides a string into a substrings 
based on a delimiter, for example. Now is the time split. It'll return an array with three words in it, three items. Now is the time. If you provide um, a string like hello and you say nothing in it, or pass, you know, a blank regex, it'll split it up on every character. So now that we have an array, we can go through this array with the each method. And then each item in this array will be a integer. And we also want to make a variable called sum because we're trying to find the sum of these things. But we're not just adding sum, I mean integer to sum like that because then all these would be wrong. We actually have to check and the condition is if the first number matches the second number or the, you know, if that number matches the next number then add it to the sum. So we need something like if integer matches array oh hold up we're gonna need array with index we need the index in this if the current number matches the next number which is index plus one then edit sum that's it so let's see what we get when we run this ruby day one Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Oops. Oh, that's right. It says here, line 7, sum is 0, but integer is actually still a string. So we just have to convert it to an integer. Let's try that again. Bruh. And we forgot to print out <laughs> the answers. So let's just print it out like that. Okay, we're getting 3300. Zero, zero. So we have this one correct. Okay, so obviously we, we're not solving the part where the array is circular and if we have to check the next number and there is no next number, we check the first number. So one way to fix that is we add another if statement. else if array so if the next number is not a number if it's nil and integer matches the integer matches right up first and then we integer to for both, but whatever. Okay, now we're getting 3409. So now this one is correct. And this one is also correct. And now the input that they want So this is the number that we have to put and see if it's that if that see if it produces the correct answer. It's pretty long. Let's see what we get. We get 1031. And that's what I put in and that is indeed the correct answer. So problem is solved. Now another way to solve this is instead of having multiple if statements you could just have one but use modulus and use something like array.size and that should produce the same same answers. Wait a sec doesn't work because you have to uh, make sure you put this in parentheses there we go that was easy now another way to solve this is 
after assigning string, after returning uh, the number to a string, you reassign string, um, and basically you take the entire string and then add the first part of the string to the end. And to get the first part, you just say string index zero, and you add it to the end like that. And then that way you don't have to do all of this modulus stuff. And so if we try that out, we'll see. We get the same answer, 3409, 1031. Now you could, you know, make this even shorter by making this into a one-liner like that. Same thing. All right, guys. Well, that's it for part one. Stay tuned for part two. It'll come out uh, pretty soon. I'm also going to be solving these in JavaScript, um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, catch you later.